Could you, for the first one, could you explain why the telecom standard on negative 48 volt for central office R box standards? And sure. what does the negative, what does the negative in the 48 volt mean? Maybe we could roll that all into one question. Sure, that's real, that's real, real easy. Um, let, let's start, like in the earliest days of, of the telephone business with um, switchboards and whatnot. Uh, the, the, the operator was in a central office, X number of operators depending on how many lines they were servicing, and they had a battery supply there that, that powered the switchboards and, and part of the wiring, the loop, if you will, between the central office and the customer. The customer's telephone had a magneto mm -hmm. and a battery supply. Um, and the magneto would, would they crank the magneto and would make the operator switchboard uh, give her an indication to, to plug in that customer one service. And then depending on how long, how many miles out from the central office, the cabling was to the customer's telephone, the customer had some batteries there and they could vary that voltage by putting a few more batteries in. They were using uh, single volt and a half of uh, dry cells. Okay. Uh, like flashlight batteries, but bigger. Right. Um, and, and that provided that. Now, it became a logistical nightmare to keep shipping batteries to customers or having uh, repairmen go out on bicycles and, and everything else to, to replace these batteries in the customer's telephone. So at some point they decided let's provide power from a centralized point at the central office to go out and power the, the, to the, the switchboard and out over those uh, cable pairs or, or, or open wire, what have you, to the customer's telephone and power it. Okay. And the customer could be so far out. So the whole thing becomes a resistive circuit. You have a resistive circuit in, in the operator switchboard end of this. You have resistance in the wiring going out to the customer, the customer's premises. And then you have a resistive circuit when the customer goes off hook with their telephone, it closes through a couple of contacts. And now you have a resistive circuit that's the earpiece of the telephone. Uh, it's, it's basically a coil, a magnet, and a diaphragm. Then it's coming down and a microphone that's basically a carbon uh, resistive type circuit. So the whole thing is resistive at that point. Okay. All right. Now, some relay at the central office has to operate. So it has to have enough current to operate. And if you go on batteries and maybe the CO has a generator, or maybe the generator failed, then that relay wants to operate, but, but your battery voltage is declining. At some point in that resistive circuit, just like leaving the headlights on in your car, at some point there's not enough current flow for the thing to work. Just like your, your headlights will get too dim to, to, yeah, to give you any light. And, and in the case of the relay, if the current flow is too low, the, uh, the relay will, you know, will no longer work. And that relay sets off a whole bunch of other things that, that make telephone calls happen. Okay. And I'm talking electromechanical and switchboard now. Um, the, all right, how much current is too much? You have to decide how much current your, your system really needs. And then, what battery voltage I need to provide and, and how long a cable pair can be. So a typical cable pair going out a couple of miles of 22 gauge wire is, you know, probably 1500 ohms. The resistance in the, in the uh, telephone itself, the resistance in the central office equipment. So that's where the 48 volts came from. By the time that 48 volts, which is actually floating a little higher in the 50, low 50s, but the, um, by the time that gets out to a customer, it's, it's typically down below 24. Okay. And so you got all that loop resistance in there. And, and so that's where the 48 volts came from. That was the voltage they needed to be able to op keep this equipment in the central office working with a declining battery voltage down to some point. And because it's declining, is that what the, is that what the negative means in the negative 48? No, no. The, the, uh, glad you asked that. The negative piece of that was in the earliest days, like if you think about your car, your car's got a 12 volt system, the negative side of the battery is grounded to the chassis, and so it's positive 12 volts running your car. Right. And in the very earliest days of telephony, they had to ground one side for reasons I'll go into in a minute. Which side to ground? Well, in the early days, they grounded the negative side, and they come to find out uh, it didn't matter with open wire, but when they went to cabling, a buried cabling or aerial cabling, uh, where you have X number of pairs in, under a sheath, the early sheaths were lead. Okay. The earth has a, uh, has a charge. And so if they grounded the negative side of the, of the 48 volts going out, you had more corrosion on the cable sheaths than if you grounded the positive side 
and had a negative potential in there. So to reduce the corrosion on cable sheaths, they went to negative 24, which means they grounded the positive side, mm -hmm. and then the negative side was, was, was the energy part, or I mean the ener energized lead. And so that reduced corrosion on the cable sheaths, which frankly saved a hell of a lot of money. Okay, that makes sense. So overall, then the negative was a money saving and an efficiency type. Right. Now. Okay.